Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to episode number 145 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. As you know by now, hopefully, it is the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn all about knives and knife collecting. Uh, get into the weeds and talk about knives. That's what our midweek supplemental is. And I'm still here, Bob. I, 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 I'm still on video, so made the commitment. But uh, hopefully, folks are liking the kind of the new format, if you will. Well, uh, people are actually commenting on the YouTube uh, videos, uploads of these, and they do like it. As a matter of fact, uh, Joe Frazier, uh, the knife whisperer, called you a handsome devil. So, um, oh, you, you know, Joe. I think people are, are happy to see everything uh, fleshed out, you know, so. He must have been hitting the bottle that night when he watched the program, <laughs> but uh, we appreciate it anyway. Hey, uh, a lot of good stuff coming up uh, this week. We've got uh, a couple of new gentlemen junkie papers trends we want to make sure uh, we call out and recognize. Also, uh, been talking a lot about traditional knives lately here on the podcast, as well as Thursday Night Knives. We're going to go uh, down that rabbit hole a little bit. Knife Life News, we've got a new GEC beer and sausage knife, Leong Ma with a smaller version of the field duty, and then a, uh, a news story that actually we want to uh, let Bob address uh, uh, involving New York law enforcement and a boy uh, with a, uh, a knife. Also, uh, we have the uh, one of the fa favorite features that uh, I like is uh, tip of the week, learning how to uh, take care of knives. And then we're going to get to the state of the collection. And the only thing in the state of the collection that we're going to talk about is what Bob calls his best knife trade ever. So oh, yeah. I think I know what that is, but... Uh, We'll let, we'll let you decide if it's uh, the best knife trade ever. But for Bob, so far it has been, and I think, uh, I think you might agree. Yeah, and actually I haven't uh, made too many trades, Jim. So it, this is a hell of a trade to start with. So, Well, sounds like you might have trouble topping that trade, but uh, you never know. Keep, uh, keep going. But that, that was an awesome trade, so uh, we'll look forward to hearing about that. Here on the Knife Junk. Key podcast. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe and uh, follow all of the Knife Junkies uh, videos and uh, exploits and knife reviews, all that kind of good stuff here on the Knife Junkie podcast, as well as on Thursday Night Knives uh, that uh, is brought to you every Thursday night at 10 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook. So, Bob, we want to start off, uh, as we do occasionally, with uh, calling out some folks with some mm -hmm. thank yous. Yeah, we got uh, two new Gentleman Junkies over this past week. Gentleman Junkie is the $10 support level on Patreon. $10 a month uh, gets you some stickers and it gets you entered, uh, gets you mentioned on the show. It also gets you entered into a monthly uh, drawing where we give away a knife. Uh, we've given away, uh, well, let's see, the last one we gave away was the K-Bar dog head knife. That was that mm -hmm. one over well. We also gave uh, an SR1 folding pocket knife from... Uh, you know, folding survival knife, really, from Cold Steel. That was our first one. And then we have uh, a SOG, and we have a Tops knife coming up. And um, also looks like we're going to do some traditional knives uh, some some point soon. I, I, feel, I feel myself drifting back into, well, fixed blades and uh, traditionals. So um, that's where my mind is headed. Right. And uh, that's probably what we'll start giving away at some point. Uh, but Two of the, the two gentlemen junkies, uh, Jesse Tellis. Thank you so much, Jesse. Appreciate it very much. Uh, I'm going to get your address, and then I will send stickers out to you. And then Mike Latham of Collector Knives. Mike, I've heard his name many times, and he's done a number of videos for uh, merchandise coming into his, uh, his uh, online store, Collector Knives, which is just, you know, if you want a GEC, you want a Bark River, something awesome, handmade and American and somewhat traditional, uh, he is the place to, to look, but he also does exclusives with Lion Steel uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and others, um, you know, and that Lion Steel has been just knocking it out of the park the last seven years or so with their traditionals, uh, with their modern traditionals, like this one right here, the Katano, <laughs> love this thing, made by Lion Steel in Italy. Anyway, uh, Mike Latham, Collector Knives, you can get this kind of thing at his site. 
Uh, Mike, thank you for becoming a gentleman junkie. It's greatly appreciated. I will get your uh, address as well and get stickers out to you. Mm -hmm. Well, again, you mentioned the uh, the knife giveaway. That's done every uh, third Thursday on the uh, Thursday Night Knives that the Knife Junkie has on the YouTube and Facebook channels. Uh, this uh, month's drawing will be on Thursday, September 17th, which happens mm -hmm. to be a big day in the person family household. That's my wife's birthday date. Oh, so date of her birthday. Yeah. So uh, September 17th, that'll be the uh, knife drawing for the uh, gentleman junkie category. So uh, still plenty of time for you to get in there. Uh, you can join the uh, knife junkies Patreon. If you just go to the knife junkie.com slash Patreon, the knife junkie.com slash Patreon, two other levels that you can join in and support only the uh, $10 a month level gets you into that uh, knife giveaway drawing, which uh, who is it? Caleb won the first one. Was it Caleb? Uh, yeah, Caleb Townsend won the first one, uh, and he was uh, and he was one one name away from winning the second. second yeah, yeah, and then, <laughs> right, exactly. Reed Reed won this one, but Reed yeah. was right next to Caleb in the wheel, and I was like, oh man. Uh, right. Caleb also uh, outbid everyone on the Terzuola package during That's the true. first. Uh, That's true. During the first town hall. So anyway, uh, we appreciate all of y'all who are all of y'all. Like I've been living in Virginia that long. I appreciate all of you for listening and uh, and supporting us. It's so it's uh, it's great. Well, it didn't phase me a bit when you said y'all. I'm a North Carolina boy. <laughs> no uh, man, that sounds like normal talk. Uh, soon I'll be saying Bowie. You know, not happening. Dag on right because Bowie is the singer. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, uh, traditional knives, Bob. Uh, a lot of talk about traditional knives going on lately your last thursday night uh knives uh show was all about traditional knives a lot yep. of great comments and conversation of, and, and uh, stuff going on about traditional knives yeah yeah i did a recent uh collection video of my traditional knives i've been wanting to do it for a long time because uh i have a, a big chest of drawers you know my dresser in the bedroom is tall and the and the top two drawers are slender and there's not much you can do with them they are like uh, almost dedicated junk drawers. So on on uh, the one side, I have that I have it all, um, you know, uh, partitioned out to have all of my uh, customs or not customs. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's a little Freudian slip. That's a little wishful thinking. All of my uh, traditionals I keep in that drawer. So I wanted to pull the little partition box out and show it off, and uh, I did in about a 34 minute video, which is. Uh, longer than my usual videos, but uh, people like collection videos, myself included. I, I love when YouTubers that I follow do collection videos. So uh, others seem to really uh, dig this one. And also it's a little bit off the uh, the usual track. You know, usually I'm talking about these kind of modern knives, you know, modern folders, but um, I really do have a strong appreciation for um, uh, traditional knives. Uh, especially considering I have a lot of them that my grandfather gave me, but also right. I love these guys like GEC and Case, and and there are others Queen uh, who are who are making um, traditionals today uh, in the traditional pat, uh, patterns with traditional materials, and then you have companies like Lion Steel and Benchmade, and you know everyone's kind of doing their take on the modern traditional now, but uh, doing things like this, so. Um, it was just great to talk about it, to show them off in that video after, at long last, and to see the feedback. Uh, I still have to respond to, to all the comments. I, I do that once a week. So if you comment on a video and you don't hear an immediate response, uh, it's not because I'm not interested. It's because I do it once a week and I, I hit all the comments and get really into it. So all right. in any case. Well, maybe, maybe yes, we'll get yeah. into the twice a week habit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jim. Yes, yes, Jim. I shouldn't have revealed that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> Yesterday, we go to a, a, a viewing party for a child's movie that's just been released, and I'm not going to give this company any more traction than they already have, but uh, they released one of their classic animated movies in live action form. Uh, some friends of ours did a screening. It was a nice big outdoor screening, and we, we sat there and watched this movie, and at some point, someone needed to open a beer, and look at what I had on me. I had my beer scout, my GEC beer scout, because I'm going back. Uh, you know, this is my this was my third knife, uh, and it, I was happy to swoop in with this. Oh no, no, no! I've got this. I've got this. And by the way, their cap lifters are incredible. Just one swipe, one swipe. 
and not for nothing, that's a pretty nice screwdriver there. That's so true. I was uh, I was happy to bust this out and and use it. And the beer drinkers were happy to have you there. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Look at how resourceful this guy is, man. Maybe knives aren't so crazy to carry. You know, always comes prepared. <laughs> All right. A lot of stuff still to come. We're going to get into uh, Knife Life news in uh, just a second. Uh, we're going to uh, eventually stick around. We're going to get to that uh, best knife trade ever and uh, see if it truly is an awesome uh, knife trade. All that's still to come here on episode number 145 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. All right, get to introduce the, the Knife Junkie for a look at uh, some of the top news stories going on in the world of knives. And uh, we've got uh, three stories we want to talk about. We want to cover today the new GEC beer and sausage knife. Uh, Leong, uh, Leong Ma back in the uh, news with a smaller version of the field duty. And then uh, some, uh, I guess, good news in the end. Uh, some Syracuse, New York officers and a boy with a knife and suicide. So uh, that's kind of the news story here. That's uh, um, broader news more than just knife knives and knife collectors. But Bob, I think you want to uh, start off with uh, talking about GEC. Well, yeah, actually, considering uh, we were just talking about traditionals. Uh, yeah, this one, Jim, uh, I, I think this is one we should all have. It's the new GEC beer and sausage knife. And uh, it's it's the number 35 pattern. It's made on the number 35 pattern. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, GEC has uh, you know many different handle uh, handle configurations, if you will, traditional handle configurations. And then they will make uh, different knives on the same chassis, uh, but with running different blades on them. Um, for instance, this is the number 35, uh, the new beer and sausage knife. And the number 35 frame um, has had two other iterations. I can't remember the first one, but the second one was the Churchill had a clip point on one side. And, you know, the main blade was a nice clip point, And the other side was, a, I think, a pen blade. And I, I labored over getting one of those uh, for a while, uh, but never did. And uh, regretted it. <laughs> but now they have this one. And... Uh, this number 35 has the uh, has the drop point blade on one side and it has a fork slash cap lifter and a beard comb with a uh, what is it that a beard detritus pick on the end of it. So this thing is uh, a unique, unique among folding knives, definitely unique among GEC knives. And uh, I'm so excited about it. Because it's a, a beard knife. Or sausage. Well, knife. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, let me explain. Uh, well, first of all, I love the 35, uh, that cigar shaped frame, meaning it's even on both ends. It's kind of uh, rounded. And, and uh, so that's called the cigar pat pattern, I guess. Uh, I'm excited that they came out with another one of those. It looks like it's in my favorite cover right there, which is jigged autumn bone. And uh, but I love the the unique tool set. And uh, as you know, every every winter uh, I grow a beard. I'm a beard tourist, if you will. So just in the winter, and uh, <laughs> and I do find myself worrying over my beard with a comb, uh, special hipster beard comb. Uh, but this is this is like old school hipster. This is like this is what the hipsters of the 1870s used to comb their beards, or maybe the, the early 1900s. Of course, I think this pattern never existed uh, uh, before now, but in this uh, old school iteration, I just think it's really cool. Uh, and, then, and then the fact that you can, you can go to a, a beer hall and, and go order a sausage and cut it up and, and eat it in style. I like right. that. And then comb your beard afterwards to get the crumbs yeah. out. Exactly. Okay, so I, I have I have a pantheon, um, not a pantheon. I have a a whole spectrum of different knife fantasies. Some of them I'm, you know, saving the town with a sword, and some of them I'm I'm you know rescuing someone. Or, uh, but one of my uh, knife fantasies involving traditionals, it, it happens at a picnic. It happens in the summer at some sort of a barbecue, and uh, for some reason, like last night, I got to live out that fantasy. I, I swooped in. I, I I opened some beers with the with the pocket knife I had, um, but uh, you know I, I think about uh, 
I think about being at this sort of event and and being able to pull that up so you know no no forks left no knives left how are we going to deal with this sausage how are we going to open this beer and here i am with the, with that okay all right i've gone too far i've let you too deep into my psyche but i'm just very excited about this number 35 beer and sausage night well you know not every superhero wears a cape some of them carry knives oh jim that was beautiful that was beautiful Mic drop. Boom. I'm out of here. You can finish up the show. <laughs> All right. See you guys. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's cool, though. You know, I'm uh, glad to hear that um, uh, that knife fantasy was uh, PG rated. If yeah. You will. <laughs> oh, geez, okay. Well, and OK, so getting back to that knife, as you know, uh, uh, beards are, are very much uh, in have been for the last, uh, you know, I don't know. 10 years. I mean, beards have always been in among men, uh, but recently among uh, uh, the rest of us, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but like hipster types. And so this kind of feeds into that. And you can also get like a Microtech out the front comb. You can get, uh, there are a number of different cool folding knife combs out there. Right. Uh, and this is just the, the traditional version. So well, unfortunately, I'm not a really manly man. I can't grow much of a beard. So I don't think I have a uh, uh, use for the beard with the D on the end comb, but I love I love the little the knife and all the little GEC. So that's that's one of my favorites. Uh, uh, not for nothing, since we're talking about beards. Last year when I grew my beard, I think it was last year, my dad looked at me and he said, oh, "Bob, you know you're getting old when your youngest is a gray beard." He called me a gray beard, like that's a a class oh. of man, like an old fart. <laughs> I was like, oh. Well, well, it could be like my college roommate who lost his hair young in life and, and then had gray beard hair young in life. So it just, you know, just say, hey, it's genetics, dad. What does that yeah. make you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm a gray beard from a long line of gray beards. Right. Uh, next, uh, Jim, I want to talk about Liang Ma. Okay. Liang Ma, who, uh, who, Liang, I know you're probably not listening, but come on, man. I sent you some dates. Come on the show. I'd love to talk to you. Uh, what an interesting guy Liang Ma is. He's a he's a chef, like a very accomplished chef, but he's also a very accomplished knife designer. And uh, a lot of his folding knife designs are are well, they're all kind of based on utility. Uh, some of them are kitchen utility. Some of them, uh, most of them are kind of like uh, you know just regular EDC kind of stuff. But they are all extremely stylish and beautiful and useful. Um, he got me with the eraser early on that came out uh, with CRKT. I loved that knife, loved it. Um, but anyway, so he the field duty, that's this knife here, is a very uh, popular knife by him. And it's a ordinarily a 3.75 inch blade, uh, but he has decided to shrink it down to 3.5. I like that it's a modest uh, scale down. It's not like he took it to, a, to three inches or something like 3.125. Sizes I just can't get behind. I can still get behind a 3.5 inch blade. So he he shrunk it down and uh, uh, they're using a different pivot now. So you're, it's, what are they called it? I think it's called the shield pivot, but it's approachable and adjustable only on one side. So uh, the other side doesn't, doesn't turn, which most people appreciate. Um, and an interesting thing, my what I find the mo most interesting about this is that he went to Mick Strider and Strider Knives and asked if he could adopt the monoblock style of construction for this. Monoblock refers to the kind of uh, um, scale and backspacer that uh, Strider has always used. And I think they originated it where it's the, um, on the non-titanium side, on the non-folding side, you have a G10 scale and you have a backspacer, but the backspacer and the G10 scale are all one, piece, hence monoblock. So that's what this is. The backspacer uh, is carbon fiber, just like the scale or um, tight or a G10, just like the scale there. So that's a cool little uh, element and it's Elmax steel. And um, I kind of feel like Elmax doesn't get enough play. Uh, so it's cool to see all of those things. Now, if you look at this knife, you'll see it's fully flat ground and it's very broad. And so this is just going to be an ultra, ultra slicing machine kind of EDC. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm sure you have mentioned it and we've talked about it here on the podcast with L Max, but it's, it's not kind of 
top of mind with me for remembering it. What what is that one of the super steels or where does that fall in the spectrum? Yeah, it's a it's a German super steel and it's um it's it's got very high um, edge retention. Uh, when Elmex first became popular, it, it was maligned a little bit because um, ZT was using it a lot. And apparently they um, were heat treating it and then grinding the blades too hot and, and ruining the temper or burning out. That I can't, I'm not exactly sure. I can't quite remember exactly what the deal with hmm. ZT and uh, LMAX is. If anyone knows out there and, and you're cringing at my... At, uh, at my description of it, please let us know. I can't remember exactly what it was. It had something to do with um, um, grinding, how they were grinding right. the blade. Okay. It required a different sort of process or something like that. Right. Uh, but but Elmax is, uh, I have, I think I, I have one knife uh, right now with Elmax steel, but it's a, it's got really high um, uh, edge retention. It's very corrosion resistant. And, and for sharpening nerds, I'm pretty sure you get a really high polish on LMAX. All right. Well, if you have any uh, experience with uh, LMAX or if you can remember the story correctly, uh, we would love to hear from you. Give us a call on the listener line. That's the Knife Junkies 24-7 listener line. It's a recording line so that you can uh, just leave a message. That's at 724-466-4487. 724-466-4487. Uh, give us your uh, your history with it, your knowledge of it. We would love to actually uh, play that message and share it with all of the listeners and viewers here on the Knife Junkie podcast. So 724-466-4487. All right, Bob, a um, bad news, good news story, I guess, if you will, involving uh, New, uh, Syracuse, New York uh, police officers, a uh, boy, a apparently had a knife, uh, threatening suicide, uh, always bad news, but good news there is, uh, I think they, uh, were able to talk him out of committing suicide. Yeah. I saw this on the uh, knife magazine newsfeed. If you don't know knife magazine, man, it's awesome. And they have a, a pretty, uh, pretty incredible, um, print version of it too, with beautiful pictures and very in-depth interviews. Anyway, their website has a great, uh, knife related news feed. So they'll, they'll show you, um, new knife drops and, and, uh, basically links to great videos and great, uh, articles. This one was interesting to me because, uh, we've, we've been, we've been lambasted with all of these, uh, stories and takes or, or hot takes from the media about law enforcement. And, and I, I think on the whole, they've been very unfair, uh, to, to sort of cast an entire uh, group of people in, you know, in, into one category due to the behavior of, of outliers. Uh, but, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. So this was a positive news story. Some, uh, a, a troubled youngster, uh, 14. God, I can't believe I just used the word youngster. Jeez, <laughs> that, that means I'm 49. A troubled young 14 year old, uh, was, um, uh, trying to commit suicide by cop, you know, he want, he, right. he he was in a bad place, and he, he thought maybe uh, if he brandished a knife, the cops would would uh, would take him out. But instead, they were trained in CIT, that's uh, crisis intervention um, training, and and they were able to recognize that this is an individual who who is in um, psychological duress, right. and they were able to. Uh, talk him down for, for lack of a better term. They were able to calm him down, get the knife away from him and get him help. And you know what? That is the majority of the stories. You know, how, how many, there, there are hundreds of millions of interactions with citizens right. every year with, with police officers and most of them end positively or and at least hear about them. them. Yeah. So it's nice to hear this kind of a story. So yeah. thank God everyone uh, walked away from this and, and not for nothing, but Jim, where you and I live, a lot of the police officers are, are trained in crisis and uh, intervention and trained yeah. to recognize uh, when, when it's someone, you know, who's, who's got psychological issues, not someone who's malevolent right. and trying to, you know, but someone who just needs to be approached in a different way. So that's, right. a, that's very important stuff. Yeah. Well, especially in these uh, troubling times, always uh, nice to uh, to highlight a positive news story involving the police, which, as I said before, uh, you don't often get to hear the the positive side of the the world of law enforcement and how these uh, young men and young women or 
even older men and women uh, truly do put their lives on the line every day to protect us. So uh, thanks everybody for what you do uh, for in the law enforcement field. Yep. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right, Bob, uh, good stories there that we try to cover uh, every week in Knife Life News. And um, that's a regular feature here on the podcast. So uh, if there's occasionally uh, something in the news that uh, you'd like to uh, see us talk about or whatever, uh, shoot Bob an email at bob at thenifejunkie.com and uh, say, hey, love to uh, kind of get your take on uh, this story in the news or this product drop or whatever. One of my favorite, it, it's probably not my top favorite segment of the show. My, my all-time favorite is when we do the uh, first tool segment where we oh, get yes. to kind of learn some history about the knives, but really uh, the maintenance moment, tip of the week, those kind of things, because as a newbie, I'm trying to, to, to learn how to, you know, buy knives, what knives are, how to take care of them. And this week's tip of the week, we're calling it, could be a maintenance moment as well, uh, really involves uh, removing surface rust from a knife blade. So it's a, yes. it's a good uh, series of tips here, Bob. I'm going to let you uh, take over and tell us all about it. Okay. Well, uh, it, it all came about when I went to North Carolina and uh, stayed right by the beach. And it's very humid there, as you may imagine. And uh, there's a lot of salt in the air. And uh, But I had to bring, I had just received the V44 um, Bark River from my folks uh, for my birthday. So I had to bring it down because I just, I wanted it with me. Because, you know, what if I was in New York or what if I was down in North Carolina and, and uh, you know, the bottom fell out and, and I had to make my way back. And I thought, man, you know, here I am on this road of desolation and that Bowie knife is just sitting on my desk. So I better bring it with me. And so that's what I did. Anyway, that salty air, you know, it just sat in my bag basically, but that salty air somehow worked its way in uh, to this beautiful leather sheath. And on the label side, I don't know what you call it with fixed blades, but on, on the show side of the knife, I started to get a little tiny bit of rust right along here. You can kind of see the the ghost of it there, actually. I need to do a little bit more work with this, but my go-to, and I've been I've been doing some uh, some more research on this, and I have some alternate uh, ideas. But my go-to when I find surface rust on on a knife is to get some fine um, uh, steel wool. Just get the fine steel wool. Uh, obviously not, not the stuff that you get, uh, with the soap in it for washing dishes, but just regular steel wool. And it comes in a, in, in a variety of gauges, get the, the, the finest gauge you can and a little bit of mineral oil, and then just put it on the, put it on the blade and rub it like this a lot. You know, you can see the grinder lines here. So I keep it within the grinder lines because a, if there's any scratching involved, and that's why you want to get the finest um, uh, steel wool is so that it doesn't scratch. And you also don't want to apply too much uh, pressure. But if it does scratch, it will be more in, in tune with the grinder lines as opposed to if you're going back and forth against it. You don't want to see a, a, a spot that's uh, that's left from that. Now, I did that with this. And, and as I'm looking at it under the light, I see I did not get it all. So I'll go back into it with the uh, steel wheel and the oil and hope that that works. But if it doesn't, uh, you can get flits and uh, that's a metal polish and it's a very fine metal polish. But um, once you start doing that, you're getting into the, um, the area of scratching and, uh, you know, you don't want a little halo area on your blade where you, where you will always know that's where you... Um, but if you're going to, you can repolish the whole blade, take the flits and take it to the entire blade and even it out. Um, I've done that before too. Right. Uh, I also like aluminum polish on steel. I know it sounds, it sounds weird, but the aluminum, um, I think it's less abrasive because aluminum is softer. And so you don't get as much, I guess on a microscopic level, you don't get as big, uh, of, uh, the, the particles that the abrasive particles aren't as big. Uh, so aluminum polish is nice. I also like aluminum polish on homemade straps, by the way. So, uh, yeah, there are a lot of great videos out there with people ha who have, um, different ways of getting off rust. 
all I'm talking about is very, very light surface rust. If it starts mm -hmm. to get into the, you know, in, in deeper in the knife, uh, right. then, then you want to go something more abrasive, even like fine sandpaper, but something that's very important, uh, whether it's, uh, this is obviously a tool steel. This is a high carbon steel. Uh, that's why it, uh, corroded quickly. Uh, but even with stainless steels, if you do this, you want to oil them, you know, just put a little coat of oil on there. And if there mm. are any, um, you know, it'll fill in, it'll get in the pores and it'll get into the tiny, uh, you know, the spaces between the that are so very, very, very small, but it'll get in there and coat it and, you know, stave off future rust. It's good to do that with, with, uh, with your carbon blade knives all that, you know, frequently. And how often should you do that? Uh, I don't know. You know, these uh, sheaths, the leather sheaths tend to soak up the oil quicker than say Kydex, you know? So, uh, um, you know, it just depends. Like this, uh, this is a Topps knife, 1095 high carbon steel. Uh, this is the Prather War Buoy. And uh, on the edge, you, uh, the reason I have this out is you can see the edge there. Uh, I used this not too long ago in the yard, uh, cutting some, some vegetation and then didn't wipe it down. And now right on the edge there where it's exposed, there's not that traction coating there. It's starting to uh, show some rust. So I have to you know, I, with this one, since it's just on the edge, I'm going to take it to the strop and get rid of the rust with the strop. Um, and then I'll oil the edge, put it back in its Kydex sheath, and that'll be fine. But with the leather ones, the leather does soak up some of the oil. So you want to just kind of keep an eye on them. If if it's just sitting in your in your knife case, it, you're not going to have to do it that often. Okay. But if you're taking it out, using it, putting it back, wiping it down and all that, yeah, you want to make sure. That so any... Coat. any specific type of oil brand of oil i mean what's the what do you look for uh well uh, others i'm sure will have more sophisticated choices i just like honing oil regular mineral oil that you would put on a stone you know um so that's what i prefer but okay. uh, right. uh i also have hops uh, hops number nine uh you know for guns and stuff gun oil works all, all these kind of things work okay hops and beer works great too <laughs> That's right. That's a different story. Hey, uh, yeah. I've heard, what about uh, baking soda? Can you, can you yes. use baking soda on knives? Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, a, a solution of baking soda and water. There's actually an excellent uh, 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 video on this topic put out by Schrade maybe four years ago, and that's what they recommend. Uh, a solution of, uh, you know, a, a baking soda and water solution with a toothbrush um, for surface rust. And, 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 you know, that, that might be good if it's getting, uh, especially with the toothbrush, if it's getting to look like it's a little bit deeper, it's not just, uh, it's not something you're just catching. It's something that's maybe had a chance to oxidize a little more, get in there with the toothbrush. And also you can vary how, um, you can vary how gritty that solution is by adding more, uh, baking soda. Hmm. Okay. So pretty inexpensive solution there as well. Yep. Making yep. Soda and you're still, you're still going to want to put oil when you're done because you're yeah. actually using water on the blade. So. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what are your uh, favorite uh, solutions? Do you have any other kind of tips about, uh, you know, keeping uh, care of your knives, removing surface rust, that type of thing? Love to uh, uh, hear from you. Uh, we keep uh, asking for calls to the listener line, and you may be thinking now that we're on video. Well, it doesn't make sense to call and have an audio recording, but we can do what they call a little audiogram. So it'll be a, a video, and I'll have the uh, the telephone message playing. So I'd love to hear from you. 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. You can also email Bob at thenifejunkie.com, but we would much prefer to uh, hear your voice and be able yeah. to uh, share your knowledge and your tips with uh, other listeners and viewers of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right, Bob, want to hear about it, man. The, All right. The, um, <laughs> the, uh, the setup was best knife trade ever. Yeah. Yeah. And I never say ever and use three exclamation points, but I did in my notes to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I traded my beloved uh, uh, Medford Slim Midi uh, that I got from Alex. Uh, beautiful, beautiful blue knife, uh, beautifully ground and everything, you know, 
but I never carry it, Nary, never used it, never carried it. And uh, I put it up for sale on Blade Forums, and I had someone come to me and say, would you accept, plus a little cash, a TRM Atom? And I jumped at it. The TRM Atom, I've been looking for one of these for a long time, uh, ever since Marianne came on the show. Uh, she came on the interview show, and then uh, Marianne Halpern, uh, the, the co-owner of Three Rivers Manufacturing, uh, she came on the show, she came on the um, town halls, and she's a great person, and I've heard nothing but amazing things about all of the knives that come out uh, uh, under TRM's uh, shingle. And uh, this is the one that is in my wheelhouse in terms of size. This is a 3.5 inch blade. And uh, and when I saw this on offer, I mean, you, you, they can't keep these in stock anywhere. And when I saw this on offer, new in box, hadn't even been, it was still sealed. Um, I jumped at it. And uh, I'm very glad I did. This knife is, uh, phew, it is everything, everything people say and more. And look at this. This is brand new out of the box. I've only had it well, less than a week. And on phosphor bronze washers, that sucker just poo, drops. It is so incredibly smooth. It's it's unreal. And then you have a very, very thin blade stock and a, and a high, high flat grind. So this sucker is really, really thin and slicey. Uh, one of the, the unique selling propositions of this knife and many of their knives, if not all of them, uh, all of their folding knives, is that the scales are built to easily come off. You see those two screws uh, here and here? You just unscrew those and remove the scale. It does not uh, affect the pivot at all. And uh, on this side, obviously, you take off the clip. You do the same thing. You can swap scales on these things, lickety split. And they have a huge product line, a huge... Um, variety, I guess I should say, of different scales that they make uh, in G10 and in Micarta. And maybe maybe they dabble in carbon fiber now and again. I, I, I'm not sure about that. But that's the great thing. You can redress and dress and redress this knife over and over and turn it into something uh, new. This one shipped with the green canvas Micarta, which I love. But recently they did a run of denim Micarta, which I would love to get my hands on a, a set of scales for this in denim micarta but uh i am i'm really really thrilled with this knife and i gotta say you know usually uh, knowing my tastes um you know usually something like this gets more pocket time just something very you know gur and adventure minded uh this has been this has been on me all the time I, something about this knife crosses all of those uh it crosses the line for me. I mean, it's uh, it's it's an EDC blade that I'm very very excited about. So there you have it. How uh, how how big did you say it is again? Roughly? Uh, it's a three point five. I think it's a three point four six inch blade. So it's a okay. it's about three and a half inches. Okay. And uh, very slender, very light, super smooth action, no blade play. I mean, it's got everything. You want now? Now, uh, Three Rivers Manufacturing, uh, for years and years, was the supplier of titanium and titanium parts to custom makers. And then, uh, as time went on, they're like, "We could, you know, we have all the parts here, and we have all of these friends who are custom knife makers. We could, we could figure this out." And they figured it out, man. They really figured it out. Very happy with this. So. If you see these up for you know sale on the secondary market and, and you're on the fence because maybe it's not exactly the kind of knife you carry, um, you know, maybe it's too big, maybe it's too small, maybe it's not tactical enough, whatever the answer is, um, you should definitely get it and check it out. And if it's not, you know, your cup of tea, you will get your money back for it when you resell it. Right. Well, it definitely sounds like uh, something I should keep my eye open, but uh, you know, it's mm -hmm. like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Unless I'm like that guy that bought the, you know, the 800 Randall knives for, you know, pennies on the dollar, I'll, I'll probably never <laughs> luck into anything like that. But uh, yeah, I think uh, folks that know knives uh, know what to look for. So uh, 
you know, maybe you can still get a good bargain on the secondary market, but uh, it does sound like a, like an awesome trade there, Bob. When you told yeah. me about it at first, I don't think I heard the uh, new in the box part of it, and that just makes it even awesomer. <laughs> yeah, if yeah, and 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 the trade, you know, um, uh, the the trade itself was probably like dollar for dollar. He probably made out a little bit better than I did in yeah. terms of the the additional cash to make up for. Um, but, uh, you know, I gave this guy a good deal because Alex gave me a good deal when, when he right. sold it to me. So, I mean, I, I didn't want to, but also this guy was offering me something that is rare. And to me, that's worth a little bit of extra money. And so instead right. of spending it in money, I, I was spending it in a knife uh, that I wasn't using. Right. Well, you know, that's the, um, definition of a good trade you know you want the both sides to be happy with the trade and it uh, yep. sounds like both of you were you got uh, both yeah. of you got what you wanted out of it so yeah good 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 deal all the way around all right uh, i want to remind folks uh, if you're watching this uh video or listening to the audio and it comes out on wednesday september 9th our uh, thursday night knives show tomorrow thursday september 10th is going to be at 10 p.m that's going to be on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube, as well as the uh, Knife Junkies Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And uh, we do hope you join us on Facebook. And I'll be the first to admit, Bob and I do not do a very good job of uh, staying in touch with you on the Facebook group and that kind of thing. We're, we're trying to get better about it. So, uh, please do continue to uh, go and join. I know we've had a lot of uh, folks join the Facebook group in the past couple of weeks, and uh, we're gonna try to do uh, a better job of staying in touch on Facebook. But if you are a Facebook user, you can actually watch the uh, Thursday night show right there on uh, Facebook, as well as on YouTube, as well as if you just wanna go to the uh, knifejunkie.com slash Thursday, you'll be able to watch in a multitude of places. And I know I've mentioned this before, we have an additional uh, streaming channel that we could go to. So if you're um, uh, someone who likes Twitch, let us know. Maybe we can get on Twitch or if there's another uh, uh, platform, maybe you watch on uh, Twitter. Uh, just let us know and uh, we'll take a look at uh, where else we could put the uh, the Thursday Night Knives show. But that's coming up uh, tomorrow night, Bob. Another interesting program, I'm sure. Uh, any any thoughts or you not want to let the cat out of the bag yet for what's on Thursday well, I we are, uh, I had a special request, uh, by our old friend, Dave. Um, he has a channel, this old sword and he does, uh, he, he's an, an old friend from Connecticut. Who's, uh, who's got a, a lifetime of, of knife collecting, but also, uh, uh, knife martial arts training in, in Kali. Um, but he requested an all automatic show. So I'm, I'm considering that I, it might take another week to, to get my, to, get that together, but uh, it might be about automatics. We'll see. Okay. All right. Well, see there, the Knife Junkie is open to suggestions for topics oh, yeah. and shows, and uh, especially for uh, for uh, having you to come on. If there's a topic that you're really interested in or have a great collection on something, uh, I know, uh, I forget how many weeks or months ago, he did a show on Tucson Knives and mm -hmm. had uh, you know, several different folks that collected two sons that came on, showed off some of their collections, talked about them. So, you know, if you have a, a special collection about something or a topic, again, shoot Bob an email at bob at thenifechunky.com. And then uh, you guys can figure out, uh, you know, kind of what to talk about. And then uh, you can come on the show and show off your knives and uh, kind of be the uh, the guest expert and help us all learn a little bit more. Uh, yeah, this coming. Of I'm sorry, oh, man. Ahead. I was just going to say that is the beauty of Thursday Night Knives. It is true. It, it is the most uh, uh, fluid environment. You, you know, we can meet you and you can just pop on, say hi, show a thing off or, um, you know, but but that is that is the best place to meet and, and yeah. meet up and talk. So, yeah, please join us on the show. You got a phone? I know you have a phone. You have an iPad? <laughs> Probably. You can join us. So, yeah, that's the beauty. This little thing right here. This this yeah. iPhone, you can you yeah. can join right from that if you have a what a Galaxy or one of those Android and Android phones. Yeah, awesome camera and join right on your phone, so you don't have to be tied to your desktop if you're out and about Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 
you, you can uh, join the show as well. That's right. That's right. Um, I'm, I'm joining the show from this date here. I'm out. I'm out to dinner with this lovely lady, <laughs> but I really wanted to. Just, I, just kidding. That doesn't happen anymore, right? People don't go out on dates because they can't. Oh, right. <laughs> but, That's true. That's true. All right. Quickly, uh, this coming Sunday, we have the interview podcast. Uh, that's uh, every Sunday. We have the interview show. Uh, Alex Steingraber with Steingraber Performance Knives is going to be on uh, uh, this coming Sunday, Bob. Yeah, that's right. He was actually someone that uh, listeners hit me to. Uh, oh, a number of listeners like, hey, check this guy out. Look at what he's doing. And I was like, yeah, I think I've seen him around. But, but really, it was the listeners drawing special attention to this guy. And uh, ended up getting in touch with him. We had a we had a great conversation. So yeah, yeah, awesome interview. And uh, I know you, you'll look forward to uh, seeing and hearing that when it comes out on uh, Sunday afternoon on all of the uh, the normal channels. I think that's going to wrap it up for this midweek supplemental, the Knife Junkie Podcast, episode number one hundred and forty five. And as I always do, I give the Knife Junkie the final word. Uh, hmm. I don't know. We'll just we'll just. <laughs> We'll just see where it's going. We'll see where it's going. My, once again, I feel the winds shifting. Um, so hmm. I might be talking a lot about fixed blade knives and traditional knives coming up here. So All right. look it up. Stay tuned. For the Knife Junkie, Mr. Bob DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie over here saying thanks so much for joining us on this episode of the Knife Thank Junkie you. Podcast. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.